Hey everybody. Today we're using R to calculate in the negative binomial distribution. Remember, the negative binomial distribution models the number of failed Bernoulli trials that occur before a fixed number of successes. Here's the probability mass function. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it here. I've got an entire video on this subject. I'll throw a link up top. All I, really want, all I really want to say right now is just to remind you that the factor of p to the r comes from the fact that we need r successes, probability p each, and x failures, probability q each, and that there are x plus r minus 1 choose r minus 1 ways of arranging those successes and failures. One important thing to bear in mind, there's more than one formulation for the probability mass function for the negative binomial distribution. It's very common to let the random variable represent the total number of trials rather than the total number of failures before that fixed number of successes. So you need to make sure that the problem you're actually trying to solve matches up in terms of the language with the usage that R is going to enforce. It's usually not such a big deal because the difference between the total number of trials and the total number of failures before that fixed number of successes is just R, the number of successes that you're going to need. There are four basic functions for computing in R when you're looking at the negative binomial distribution. The first is R and binome, which is just your random number generator. It's going to generate the requested number of values with a, from a negative binomial distribution with the given parameters, R total successes and P the probability of success on any individual trial. For instance, R and binome 10 comma 3 comma 0.5 generates 10 values where each one represents the number of failures before we get three successes, where the probability of success on each individual trial is 0.5. So here in the first simulation, we had zero failures. Then in the second, we had three failures. Then in the third simulation, four failures, all before three total successes in each run. Next is dn binome. This is the probability mass function. So this is how you compute probabilities of, for specific values in a negative binomial distribution. Um, in particular, as usual in, um, in R, x can be a vector. So for instance, dn binome, 0 colon 10 comma 3 comma 5, gives back probabilities of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, failures before the third success when the probability of success in each trial is 0.5. pn binome is the cumulative probability mass function. And again, x can be a vector. So for instance, p n binome, 0 colon 10 comma 3 comma 5, gives the probability of at most 0 failures, at most 1 failure, at most 2 failures, etc., before getting the third success in um, a sequence of Bernoulli trials with probability of success 0.5 each time. Finally, q n binome is the inverse CDF of the negative binomial distribution with those parameters. It gives you back the smallest value x such that pn binome is greater than or equal to the probability pi that you've specified. And once again, pi can be a vector here. I think that's easier to understand when we see an example. So here we see qn binome of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75 in a negative binomial distribution with parameters r equals 3 and p equals 0.3. And we got back 3, 6, 10. This is supposed to be a sort of inverse to pn binome, and so in the next line, I've done pn binome for the values from 0 to 10 with the same parameters. If you look at the position corresponding to x equals 3, and that's the fourth position in this vector because, of course, the vector starts with 0. It's possible to have 0 failures before all those successes. Um, that x equals 3 value is just over 25%, the first um, value that I input into the qn binome. Similarly, the position in the output there corresponding to x equals 6 is just over 50%, and the one corresponding to x equals 10 is just over 75%. Okay, let's do a few problems. A cereal company randomly places one of five different toys in each box of its cereal. One particular child is trying to collect six copies of their favorite toy. So here they only like one of the toys. Their probability of success each time they get a box of cereal is 1 in 5 or 0.2. They need six total successes, so the other parameter here is r equals 6. First, we'd like to find the probability that they find the sixth copy of their favorite toy after finding exactly 25 other toys. So let's flip over to r here. 
I've already pulled up the help file for the negative binomial distribution here with question mark d and binome. And you can also see the syntax and usage for those other negative binomial functions that I mentioned, pn binome, qn binome, and rn binome. Okay, so here we need to know a specific probability, so it's going to be a dn binome. And in particular, we want to know the probability of 25 failures before the sixth success, when the probability of success in each trial is 0.2. And in this case, it's just over 3%. Number two, what's the probability that the child has to open at least 20 disappointing boxes before finding the sixth copy of their favorite toy? So we want the probability of at least 20 failures. Now I'm going to do this using a complement. I'm going to find the probability of less than 20 failure, less than 20 failures. In other words, the probability of less than or equal to 19 failures. And that's a PN binome, um, a cumulative probability question. So back to R, let's do one minus the PN binome in question. And um, again, we want less than or equal to 19 in order to um, do less than 20. Our parameters are still going to be the same. We want six successes and a 0.2 probability of success in each trial. So just under 62% in this case. Finally, simulate the number of failures before the sixth success a thousand times, and then produce a hopefully attractive histogram of the results. Okay. So in this case, since we're doing simulations, it's an rn binome command. So let's call the result boxes and do rn binome. We want a thousand simulations. So we have, you can picture this as a thousand different children, each doing the same thing, going out and buying boxes until they get six copies of their favorite toy. Again, the parameters are six comma point two. Now we want to get a plot of this. Um, I'm going to use um, the ggplot2 package, so let's get that in with library parenthesis tidyverse. That'll take just a second. And since I just want a histogram for an individual vector, I am going to use the qplot command. There's no reason to really build a data frame with this. Let's make this, um, let's, let's specifically say that we want a histogram, although R would default to that if we didn't mention it. And um, let's get a boundary color in here, I parenthesis quote black. And just to take a look at how that comes out, of course, my vector is not named X. It is going to be boxes. Yes. There we go. There's a histogram of those results of those thousand simulations. You can see, as you would expect from a negative binomial distribution, that it's got this slightly rightward skew to it.